Okay, in this, in this section we will cover two topics, the idea of tangent lines and the concept of linear approximation. And before we do either of those, though, we need to do a quick algebra review of this type of problem. This type of problem is going to show up in this section over and over. Here we're told, find the equation of the line with a slope of 2.25 that goes through negative 2, 3.5. So we have a point and a slope. And so what comes to mind is the point-slope form of an equation for a line. y minus y1 equals m x minus x1. And we put in these values. 2.25 is the slope. And then these numbers are x1 and y1. So x1 is negative 2 and y1 is 3.5. And we work that out. So we get y minus 3.5 is 2.25 x minus negative 2. And if I distribute over on the right side, I get 2.25x plus 4.5. And then let's uh, just solve this for y. And you get y is 2.25x plus 8. So that's the equation of the line done with the point-slope form of the equation for the line. And then we put it into y equals mx plus b form, or into intercept, slope intercept form, just because that's the most convenient and easy form. Now there's another approach we could take to this also. y equals mx plus b. The standard, uh, or not the standard form, but the, uh, the slope intercept form, the most common form of an equation for a line. Now if we can write this, if we can get the values of m and b, then we're done. And we know the value of m. 2.25. So what we're going to do is plug in the value 2.25 for m and then plug in these numbers for x and y. So negative 2 goes in for x and 3.5 goes in for y and that will allow us to find b. So we'll get the same answer here. I'm just showing you a different way to do it. So 3.5 is equal to 2.25 x oh x is negative 2, excuse me, 2.25 times negative 2 plus b. So 3.5 is equal to negative 4.5 plus b, and you get b equals 8, and then you can write the equation of the line. y equals m, which we know is 2.25, times x, plus b, which we know is 8. So same answer either way. Um, a lot of people find this to be a little bit easier, and I, I personally think that's a little bit easier, but this is probably more common. Most of the textbooks and literature dealing with, with this type of problem use what we call the point-slope form of an equation for a line, but either way you do it is okay. And now we'll talk about finding a tangent to a curve. And this is an important topic. This was a big deal. At the time calculus was being developed, this was one of the problems they were working on solving, and one of the problems Newton and Leibniz effectively solved. Find the exact equation of a line tangent to a curve at a particular point. In this example, we're given the equation y equals 3 minus x squared, which you should recognize as a downward sloping parabola. And we want to find, or a, a downward, a parabola that opens downward. And we want to find the equation of the line tangent to the curve at x equals negative 1. So if you want to get a mental picture, 3 minus x squared is going to look like this. And over here at x equals negative 1, there's some y value and there's a line tangent to the curve at that point. We're trying to find the equation of that line. So first, let's find this point right here. Okay, the point is going to be the y value when x is negative 1. So it's just y of negative 1. So we just put negative 1 in right there. So 3 minus negative 1 squared. And that's obviously 3 minus 1, which is 2. So the y value is 2. Now let's find the derivative of this function. Let's find y primed. That's pretty easy. Just term by term, we get the, the derivative of 3 here, which is 0. And then the derivative of negative x squared is negative 2x. So this is the derivative function, the derivative of the original function. So let's find y primed of negative 1. That will be the slope of my original curve at this point. So y primed of negative 1, I'm just going to put in negative 1 right there. So it'll be negative 2 
times negative 1 squared, and that's obviously equal to 2. So the curve has a slope of 2 right at that point, and that means the line tangent to the curve has a slope of 2. So what we have now is a slope of 2, and we have a point. And the point is this point right here, negative 1, comma 2. So I'll use the point-slope form of an equation for a line. y minus y1 equals m x minus x1. So y minus, for y1, I'll put in 2. y minus 2 equals the slope. For the slope, I put in the slope that I calculated at that point, which is 2. And then I have x minus x1. And for x1, I put in negative 1. So this is y minus 2 equals 2x plus 2, and I'll bring this 2 over here, and I get y equals 2x plus 4. So I found the line tangent to the curve at a given point. Okay, here's another example. f of x is equal to 2 times the square root of x, and we're told to find the line tangent to f at x equals 1. So again, a little mental picture might help. So 2 square root of x looks something like this. And here at x equals 1, the curve will have some y value. So that'll give me a point. And it will also have a particular slope at that point. And if I find that slope, I can find the tangent line. And the goal is to find that tangent line that I just drew there in yellow. So first, let's find the point. The point is just going to be f of 1. So that's 2 times the square root of 1, which is 2. Now, let's rewrite our function here, f of x. Instead of 2 square root of x, I'm going to write it as 2x to the 1 half. And I can take the derivative of it in this form pretty easily with the power rule. So f prime of x is going to be 2. The 2 sticks around as a constant multiplier. And then I have 1 half times x to the negative 1 half. And these 2's cancel out. And so the derivative, f prime of x, is just equal to x to the negative 1 half, which is the same thing as 1 over the square root of x. So the derivative at 1, or the slope of the graph at 1, is going to be f prime of 1, which is just 1 over the square root of 1, which is clearly 1. So at that point, the slope is 1. So here's what we have. We have the point which is 1 comma 2 and the slope which is 1 so we'll just use the slope intercept form or excuse me the point slope form of an equation for a line y minus y1 is m x minus x1 and put in these values and so I have y minus 2 is equal to m which is 1 times x minus x1, which is 1. And so I have y minus 2 equals just x minus uh, 1. And if I add 2 and get rid of that over there, I get y equals x plus 1. That is the equation of the line tangent to this particular function at x equals 1. Okay. Let's go back and look at that first example again. This was y equals 3 minus x squared, and we found the tangent line at x equals negative 1. And this was the answer we got. We can actually check this on the calculator. I've got the calculator here, and if we type in 3 minus x squared and graph it, and I've got a nice zoom window set, we see our downward parabola. We can plot the tangent line on the calculator. And here's what you do. See the, um, the program key here? The second function on the program key is draw. And if we hit second draw, and option 5 there is tangent. If we go down to tangent and draw tangent, it puts the graph back up, and it's waiting up for us to type in an x value. And so I'll type in negative 1. Type in negative 1 and hit enter, and it draws the line tangent, and it gives you the equation for the line. There it is down at the bottom, y equals 2x plus 4. Let's do that for the, the second second equation as well. This was uh, 2 square root of x, and what we got was x plus 1. So let's come over here to the calculator, come over to y1 and clear this out, and type in 
2 square root of x. So that's our function, 2 square root of x. And we'll graph it. And there it is. And then we hit second draw and come down to option 5, which is tangent. And we want to find the tangent line at x equals 1. So we just type in 1 and press enter. And it calculates the tangent line and draws it. Now notice that the, the equation it gives is not exact. That's because it calculated this using a numerical approximation. But this is very close to y equals 1x plus 1, or y equals x plus 1, which is what we got. Again, the inexactness is due to the numerical methods the calculator is using, rather than the exact calculus that we're doing here.